Tonight's video topic is the callback. The casting director has called you back for producers because they like what you did in the pre-read. Resist the temptation to go home and change things. A casting director expects you to come into the callback repeating what you did in the pre-read. The callback for producers, it's very, very important to be consistent. The casting director called you back because they liked something that you did in the pre-read. And what happens to actors a lot of the times is, is that they go home and they work on it. And they work on it and they come up with new things to do and they change things and they change their clothes and all of this stuff. And it, um, then the actor comes into the room and you guys are unrecognizable to the casting director as to why we called you back in the first place. And the producers are turning to us and looking at us like, why the heck did you bring that actor in? You know, So it has to be uh, consistency. If you don't uh, get any notes in the room and you just get a call from your agent or your, the casting office and say you have a call back, you have to think back to what you did originally, back to what's my intention, what's the relationship, What's the sense of place? You have to go back to square one. If you got a giggle or a laugh on a, on a laugh line, you can't ask yourself, how did I say that? How did I say that? Because it'll never work. You, you can't ever repeat it. It's doomed to failure. So you have to go back to the original, where am I? What do I want? Who am I talking to? And the other problem with the callback is that the job gets a little closer. <laughs> And you start to think in your mind, oh, wow, this is really, this would be really great if I got this part. Uh, my agent won't fire me because I haven't booked anything. Um, my mom won't make me move back to, you know, <laughs> Alabama because, um, you know, I booked this thing. And so your mental focus starts to go in the wrong place, that you go for the job. And you can't go for the job. You have to go, and I think a lot of you talked about this uh, in our discussion about, um, earlier about uh, what, once you get an audition, you can't let the focus be the job. It has to be, I have a chance to act today. Mm -hmm. This is my three minutes to get up and, you know, act today and, it, you know, and do my best and bring myself to the part and make it right for me. So the casting director that you're in front of, if they don't feel you're right, or the producers that you're in front of, if they don't feel you're right, then they'll think of you for something else. There are more people in the room, right? Uh, in, in the pre-read, it's just the casting director. Um, you could have four, five, ten people here, depending on how many producers are in the room. Um, part of the problem with the callback, too, is it's, it's in a different room from the, the pre-read. The pre-read is in a very small room, um, um, and the callback room is a bigger room. It's sometimes in the producer's office or at the, on the studio lot where the producers have the deal. So you're in a bigger room. And so part of it is the the fear of the unknown of walking into a space that you don't know and you don't know the people in it and so it's kind of like the first day of school you sort of go uh, you know what, what what's what's going on there so that's why it's so good when you walk into an unknown room to spy the chair that's the familiar thing in the room in this new room and figure out who you're reading with you know, you might have read the pre-read with the casting assistant or the casting associate, and then the callback is maybe with the casting director reading, and you've never met the casting director, and there are all these unknown people in the room. So you need to take control and ask, who am I reading with, you know, or am I reading with you? No, you're reading with him, you know. So you have to take control of that. Don't just assume, you know, an actress was telling me one time that she went to all the way to the network and she had read with the same casting director three times and at the network she had the first line and so she started off reading with the casting director and and the casting director went you know her partner was reading today you know so she just went and kept on going but she said it just went downhill from there you know and I said you know in hindsight you should have just stopped it was so early on just stop and go oh, I'm sorry I thought you know You're pulling out all the stops. Um, How did you know I love Thai? Oh, I didn't. I just figured I'd be safer with chopsticks on the table. I'm sorry my mom put a butter knife on you. I'm so mortified. Don't be. You know, when I first joined the firm, I was working like a 90 and 100 hours a week. I didn't have time to sleep, let alone get groceries. 
I mean, I don't know how she knew, but one day your mom marched into my office with a bag from Trader Joe's and three homemade lasagnas for my freezer. Her lasagnas are pretty delish. <laughs> so what's good here? Uh, the pineapple duck curry. I um, had it last week and it was out of this world. You mean on another date? I was just out with some friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, if you think I'm some sort of player, trust me, I'm not. Which is something only a player would say. <laughs> how do I know you're not one of those wannabe surgeons I work with? Cocky, self-assured. The kids are God-given right to date five women at once. I I'm sure you have a lot of girls lined up for the weekend. Huh, try me. <clears throat> Aw, you're a mama's boy. It's your mama's boy and a player. <laughs> you're tough like your mom. <laughs> Dad? Law firm? Me? Ah! Terry! And another one. And another one. So is she your Saturday night? She's my brother, Terrence. <laughs> He's 18. <laughs> he wants to quit high school. I'm trying to talk him off the edge. Don't push too hard. My mom's pushed me really hard ever since kindergarten. And <laughs> you didn't turn out so bad. That curry was to die for. I can't believe I'm going to ruin it by going to eat hospital commissary froyo for dessert. <laughs> I'm up for bad froyo. If you want some company. I would love to, but I start my shift in half an hour. Maybe next time? Well, as long as there is a next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mom, did you know that Leonardo da Vinci could draw with one hand while writing with the other? Wow. Um, what are you here for? The free cocktails. Right. Happy hour. I'm Taylor, AML. Kate, APL. Ooh, a rarity. Aren't we all? <laughs> uh, platelets. You're in remission? Today, anyway. Chemo? Yeah. So, um... What do you do when you're not here at the hospital? Wait for something that makes me come back. Um, maybe we can wait together sometime. Can I get your phone number? Oh, oh here, I have a pen. Um, thanks. Um, oh, this is my mom. Mom, um, this is Taylor. He's AML. Sarah Fitzgerald, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Miss Fitzgerald. Okay, you're out of here, Taylor. My ride's here. I'll call you, Kate. Mm. Well, let me just talk for a second about director and television. They're not always in the room at this point in, um, uh, and, or, or episodic. They're rarely in the room. Why? Because they're off um, uh, shooting another show, you know, another episodic show or another pilot or something. So oftentimes the callback in television is just for the executive producers, the writers. Um, they usually make all the, most of the casting decisions. And the director usually comes in at the studio and the network level. What you have to do is, in a callback, when it's a different, larger room and there are more people in it, which might feel a little like an audience, you have to let the casting director be your barometer. Where is the casting director sitting? So if it's a huge room, they usually put the chair a comfortable distance from you to them so you can be conversational and real, but back enough so they can see you. So instead of filling the room this way, it's just talking to the person who's right there. You see what I'm saying? It's there. Now, if a camera is going in the room, make sure that it's about your energy. So it's not about being loud here, it's just about your energy. So instead of it being here in filmic, which is the other thing that people do sometimes, oh, it's film, I need to be really low and boring and, you know. Um, it's just putting your energy here, okay? So the casting director is your barometer regardless of how many people are in the room and regardless of the size of the room. That's the biggest thing in the callback to remember and so therefore you can be consistent from the pre-read to the callback by just bringing the casting director into your bubble of focus, okay? Part of being consistent from the pre-read to the callback is to wear the same outfit to each audition. The casting director has started to visualize you in the part. And believe it or not, if you change clothes, they may not feel you're right anymore, even though you're a wonderful actor. So help the casting director continue to visualize you in the part by wearing the same outfit. 